Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. At breakfast tomorrow, try this. Pour out a bowl full of crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Add milk or cream, top with fruit, and get set. Yep, get set for the keenest, swellest tasting breakfast ever. Now, did I hear you say, look, nothing could be that good? It couldn't, huh? Well, just you try Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice tomorrow, sure. Niku sat on the floor of the igloo facing the sleeping bench and watching the stranger as he talked with his uncle, Kulak. This was the first white man the Eskimo boy had ever seen. Wonder was in his eyes. Never had he seen a man with a beard like this before, so thick and black. And never had he seen a knife such as the white man held in his hand. Neither had Kulak, for that matter. He watched the flashing blade constantly, although he spoke of other things. Good for man to travel now. The wind is a whisper, but soon it will change. The storm will come. It will last for many days. After a sleep, I must go. One of your dogs is lame. He cannot travel far. Yes, that is true. I must find another dog. Uh. The men were silent for a moment. And in that moment, fear took possession of Niku. This was trading talk. The man was offering the knife for a dog. And Niku was afraid he would choose his own dog, the black husky he had named Tornak. I have many dogs. Yes, I've seen them. They sleep in the tunnel with my dogs. They are good dogs. Yes, they are good dogs. This is a good knife. There's no life like this within a thousand miles. Uh. The blade is sharp enough to cut a hair. Yeah, I'll show you. The stranger pulled a hair from his head. A flick of the blade and it was cut in two. Ah, it is a good knife. But it would not be wise to trade a dog for a knife. No, it not be wise. Buckland does not talk to you. No, Kulak. But there is wisdom in his speech. Man can make knife of whalebone. But without dog, he's nothing. A boy is nothing. Hold your tongue. A man can't make such a knife as this from whalebone. Uh. And if a man has many dogs, it is a small thing to lose one of them. Uh. But it must be a good dog or I'll not part with a knife. All Kulak's dogs are good. But there is only one I want. Name the dog. It is the black. No, Kulak. Tonak is mine. Hold your tongue. He was given to me by my father before he died. The black husky is the one I want. You cannot have him. The black husky... Shall be yours. No, Kulak. He's not yours to give. He is the price you pay for food you eat. The dog is yours, Buckland. Give me the knife. No, Kulak. Oh, no. Not yet, Kulak. It may be that as we sleep, the boy will turn the black dog loose. This cannot happen. He shall have the knife when the dog is hitched with the rest of my team, and I'm ready to leave your village. So be it. Tornak. No, Kulak. No. There was nothing that Niku could do, and he knew it. But when the others were asleep, he put on his parka and crawled into the tunnel where the dogs were sleeping. Some of them growled at him. 
Tornak, though, raised his head and whimpered a greeting as the boy put his arm around him. Tornak, the stranger will take you away with him when he goes. There is nothing I can do to stop him. If I turn you loose, Tornak, where would you go? Where would you find food? I, I would go with you as the stranger sleeps, but then we both would surely die. No, Tornak, you must go with him. Because Kulak is greedy for the shining knife. Tornak, someday I will find you. Someday we will be together again. Someday, Tornak, I promise. The stars were still shining as Buckland prepared to leave the village. For there is no day during the long winter above the Arctic Circle. Tornak was harnessed just in back of Buckland's lead. But these were strange dogs, and he fought to be free until Buckland lashed him with his long whip. Stay there! Get back! No, no, don't beat him! And make him be quiet! Tornak! Tornak! I have told you, you must go with the stranger. Yeah, that's better. And now the knife. Yeah, here it is. I must warn you, Kulak. There is powerful magic connected with a knife. If men come this way and ask for me, you must tell them nothing. You must hide the knife until they have gone. Tell all the men in the village, Kulak. If anyone speaks of me, the knife will turn against you. You will die. Do you understand? Uh, I will tell the men. No one will speak of you. Good. <laughs> Steady. Push! Push! Kulak was right about the change in weather. The wind from the north became a gale, and no one in the village stirred out of the igloos. But 24 hours later, Kulak's dogs began to bark. There must be someone outside, Kulak. Perhaps the stranger has come back. Oh, she. The boy lifted the skin curtain that separated the large living room of the igloo from the tunnel. He crawled through it and out into the storm. A traveler, but not the man with the beard. Where's your chief, son? My name is Niku. I am nearly a man. Oh, I can see that now, but tell me where the chief lives. This is Kulak's house. He is brother of my father and head man of village since my father died. Good, I want to talk with him. It be well for you to unharness your team, bring dogs into tunnel. It's not possible to travel in this storm. It's possible, all right, but I guess we could use a little rest. I will help with team. Good. <coughs> what you call your lead dog? King. Boy, oh, he wishes to be friends with me. He likes to be friends with nearly everyone. But how can he be good lead dog if he is gentle? He isn't always gentle. The other dogs obey him? Yes, without question. He settled that a long time ago. Oh. All your dogs are good dogs. Yes. A good dog is a fine thing. My dog was called Tornak. Huh? But he is gone now. He died, Nico? No. No, he's gone. You come, I, I will show you the way. Come on, boys. Inside the tunnel where you can warm up. Your dogs will fight with Kulak's dogs for a little while. Oh, I don't think so. Nico, you stay here, King. Make everybody behave. Oh, it is a wonder. Even Kulak's lead obeys him. King's a pretty big dog. I will lift the curtain. Kulak, here is a traveler. He will rest with us until the storm dies. Uh, give him food. A kind greeting, Kulak. You are welcome. Rest here on the sleeping bench. Just as soon as I take off my parka, it's warm in here. Kulak! What's the matter? Oh, my uniform. Yes, it... It is red as blood. Yes, haven't you ever seen a Northwest Mounted Police uniform before? No. And you don't understand? No. Well, you have heard of the Great White Mother across the waters. Uh. I'm her servant, Kulak. My name's Sergeant Preston. Whenever a man has done wrong, it is my duty to find him and bring him before the judges. Kulak has done no wrong. I believe you, but all men are not like Kulak. Let me tell you. A hundred miles to the east, there was a trading post. A trading post? Only a hundred miles? Yes, it was started last spring, and many Eskimos went there to trade their furs. There was also a mission where the good father doctored the Eskimos. Uh, 
But now there is no trading post and there is no mission. The white men did not like our country. No, it wasn't that. An evil man came to the trading post one day and killed the trader. The good father tried to stop him and he also was killed. Uh. The killer left the post and headed in this direction. I believe he's trying to get to Alaska. His name is Buckland. He's a big man with a black beard. If you have seen this man, you must tell me, Kulak. It's the wish of the great white mother across the waters. Uh, have you seen him? No. We have seen no traveler from the east but you. But Kulak. Why do you stare? Give Sergeant food. Yes, Kulak. Here. Here it's food. Oh, thank you, Nico. I will feed your dogs. That's fine. You will rest here, Sergeant. For a few hours, and I'll have to be on my way again. An hour later, everyone in the igloo was asleep with the exception of Niku. He crawled close to the sleeping bench and touched the sergeant's shoulder. Oh? What is it, Niku? I must speak with you. Come with me outside. All right, Niku. And a moment later, outside the igloo... What is it? The man with beard. He is evil man. He's very bad. I knew that when he beat Tornak. You knew? You've seen him? Yes. He was here space of summer day ago. You will take him before judges so he cannot beat Tornak. You can depend on that, Nico. Oh. What's the matter? Kulak. I saw him in the tunnel. He has heard what I told you. You don't have to worry about that. He should have told me himself. He will kill me after you have gone. But it does not matter. What are you saying, Nico? It is true. He will kill me to save himself from... from the magic of the night. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, I was out walking one night. It was a beautiful night, full moon and everything. And, well, sir, maybe you won't believe it, but here's what happened. Hello, down there. For a moment, I didn't realize who was talking to me. Hello! Then I saw him. Say, aren't you... Yes, I am the man in the moon. Well, gee, I've often seen you, but this is the first time I've had the pleasure of talking to you. I don't talk to everyone. But why favor me, Mr. Man in the Moon? I want to compliment you. About what? About giving all the boys and girls such good advice? You mean telling them to eat a good breakfast and that nothing tastes better than delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit? Precisely. Well, I don't want to brag, but I must admit that wheat or rice shot from guns are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor. They're crisp, they're tender. And what's more, I think it's important to tell all the fellas and girls that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are good for them. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Good advice, that. But say, Mr. Man in the Moon, how do you know so much about wheat or rice shot from guns? We don't sell Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice up there on the moon. <laughs> I am old and wise. The man in the moon knows many, many things. Well, sir, fellas and girls, what do you know about that? One thing, though, and this is for sure. Unlike the man in the moon, you can always enjoy nourishing, tasty breakfasts of Quaker puff wheat or Quaker puff rice morning after morning. Grocers everywhere down here have crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns. But mind you, it's never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way you're sure to get the original, the one and only Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. Now to continue. The sergeant looked with concern into Niku's face after the boy announced that Kulak would kill him for what he had said. What are you talking about, Niku? 
To save himself from the magic of the knife, what knife? Kulak traded my dog for knife for shining blade. The bearded man said there was great magic in it. And he told Kulak not to tell anyone about his being here. Yes, Sergeant. He said if anyone told, Kulak would die. The knife would turn against him. I... I do not believe in such magic. You have a lot of sense, Nikon. But Kulak believes. He will kill me. No, he won't. Take me with you, Sergeant. Take you with me? In this storm? I have traveled in worse storms. I can help you find the man with beard. But this is your home. I won't be coming back here. No. No, I, I am not wanted here. And I have heard... There are schools where one can learn the speech and ways of the white man. I would like to go to such a school. You're a smart boy, Niku. I think you'd do well in a mission school. Take me with you, Sergeant. That sounds like a good idea. I'll put the fear of the Queen in Kulak, but even so, I wouldn't feel safe in leaving you here. Superstition's almost impossible to fight. Well, settled. Come on, we'll tell Kulak. Kulak made no objection to Niku's leaving. In fact, he was glad to be rid of him. The sergeant called the men of the village together and delivered a lecture on cooperating with the law. Then he and Niku started out. Hunting! Hunting! Husky! Their course lay across the frozen surface of the sea. The wind roared down from the pole, whipping the snow in the air to a height of 30 feet. It was bitter weather, and after traveling many long hours, the huddle of igloos in the icy waste was a welcome sight. Hunting! Think we'll find the man with the beard here? Oh, yes. Even with Tornak, his team is not as good as yours. He is not strong as you. We will find him here. Look, Niku. The men are coming out of their igloos. Sergeant, they carry spears. We are not welcome here. I'll find out why. Hulking! Oh, you husband! Oh, no. You stay here, Niku. The sergeant walked toward the village, and as the figures of the Eskimos became clear through the whirling snow, he saw one of the men raise his spear. The sergeant whipped out his gun and fired into the air. With wild yells, the Eskimos turned and ran. Up! I come in peace! In spite of the sergeant's shout, the Eskimos disappeared into their igloos. The sergeant started on once more, when a volley of shots rang out from one of the snow huts. He dropped to the ground and fired in return. Ping! Got the team turned around! He began crawling back toward the sled. And as he did so, the wind increased in violence, and a curtain of driven snow blotted out the village. He leaped to his feet and ran back to the team. King had the team turned around, and the sergeant leaped on the runners of the sled. On King! The great dog leaped forward along his back trail. Sergeant! I'm afraid. It's all right, Nickel. The stick that belts is fire and thunder. We call it a gun. There is another in village. Yes, it must have been the man with the beard who fired it. I not see him. No, he sent the Eskimos out to drive us away. When they turned and ran, he had to shoot. Why do Eskimos raise their spears against you? I don't know, Niku. There's no telling what Buckland's been saying to them. But I'm going to find out. Where are we going? Back away. We'll build an igloo. All right, on King. <laughs> The sergeant put half a mile between the sled and the village before he called out a command to stop. Okay, hold on. Then, cutting great blocks of snow with his snow knife, he quickly built an igloo. He carried his primus stove inside, lit it, and soon the interior was snug and warm. He fed the dogs, cooked some food for Niku and himself, and after they had eaten... I'm going to leave you here a while, Niku. Where do you go? To the village. King and I. But they will kill you. I'm not going to let them see me this time. The dogs will catch your scent. They will bark and tell villagers you are coming. They won't get our scent this time. We'll make our approach from the south, which will be downwind. Our scent won't be carried to the dogs, and we'll crawl through the snow, so none will see us. Let's go, King. <laughs> Outside the cabin, it was impossible to see more than 20 or 30 feet ahead. But using his compass, the sergeant made a wide circle to the south, counting his steps. At last, he stopped and dropped to the snow. Well, it should be due north of us now, King. We'll crawl until we get there. It was ten minutes later that the igloos loomed ahead through the snow. The sergeant headed for the one at the edge of the village. He reached its tunnel without being seen. He pushed aside the block of snow that filled the entrance. There was one dog inside the tunnel. Keep him quiet, King. A woman's voice called out. Sergeant threw back the curtain at the end of the tunnel. It was warm inside the igloo, 
And as he stepped inside, he opened his parka. Oh. The Eskimo woman inside saw his uniform. You red devil! Be quiet. The woman picked up a knife and started for the sergeant. But he caught her wrist and twisted it from her grasp. I won't hurt you. Tell me why you called me the red devil. Let this seal come back. We are starving. We have no meat to eat. The flame in our lamps is low. So you haven't been catching any seal. Oh, no, we have not. And it's my fault, I suppose. Yes. Who told you that? The man with the black beard? Yes. What else did he tell you? That if you are killed, we will find seal again. Anything more? That if you enter the village, we will starve to death. Now we are lost. No, you're not. Where is the man with the black beard? In the singing hut. Who's with him? All the men of the village. My husband, Angatok, cast a spell on you. Oh, so your husband is the shaman. Yes. But he has failed. Now listen to me for a minute. He has failed. He has Just failed. Just be quiet and listen. I'm not a devil. I'm a man. I'm the servant of the great white mother across the waters. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. I've come here to arrest the man with the black beard who has killed two men. I'm going to take him before the judges who will punish him for his crime. No. No, the men will not let you touch him. They will die first. I'm going to change their mind about that. I'm going to prove to your husband and the other men that I'm a friend. A friend? I mean no harm to anyone in this village. That's why I'm not going to make an arrest now. But tell your husband this, and don't let him tell anyone else, especially the man with the beard. I'm going away, and I'll return with Seal, so that you will have food and fuel, which will prove I'm a friend, won't it? Yes. Give me one of your husband's harpoons. Beside the lamp. Good. You'll tell your husband and only your husband. If you bring back seal when there are no seal, then you are good spirit, not bad one. I'm only a man, a policeman. I will tell my husband. The sergeant left the village under cover of the storm and returned to the igloo he had built. Niku was pathetically glad to see him. I was afraid, sergeant. I was afraid they killed you. Don't worry, Niku. I found a way to help the villagers and make them our friends. How? Oh. You remember back about 20 miles and the dogs tried to head out to sea and King had a hard time keeping them straight? Yes. They had caught the scent of seal. Right. That's where we're going. Here, King. At the scent of this harpoon. Find seal, King. Seal. Sergeant, he understands. Yes, he'll lead us to the right spot, won't you, boy? And so once again, Sergeant Preston and the Eskimo boy braved the Arctic storm for long hour after hour. It was King who let them know when their destination was reached, for there was no sign that a man could recognize in that white wilderness. All right, boy. Hold there. Hold there. King was unharnessed, and the sergeant followed him, harpoon in hand, across the trackless snow. At last, the dog stopped and looked up at his master. An air hole here, King? Sergeant probed through the snow with his harpoon and found the seal's air hole. Then he built a windbreak on the north side of it as a protection against the bitter northern gale. Now we wait, King. The sergeant crouched with his harpoon ready, watching a slender piece of whalebone which he had thrust down through the snow to the open water beneath it. He waited without moving a muscle for one hour, for two hours, for three hours. And during all that time, King crouched in the snow as motionless as his master. Then the piece of whalebone rose and fell, and the sergeant struck. <coughs> Got him, King! It was Angatok and his wife who first heard the sergeant's dog team. What? A traveler. It is the man with the red coat, I we know. We will see. Come. Together they hurried from the igloo. The wind was dying down, and only an occasional flurry of snow blurred their sight. They could see the team, the sled, the man, and the boy clearly. It is he! The villagers joined the shaman and his wife. It is the red devil again! We must wake the man with a beard, or the red devil's fire stick will kill us. No! No, this man is our friend! Yes, it is true. Look, on the sled, a seal. A seal! Hear my words. This man is servant of the great white mother across the waters. He comes as a friend bringing us food. We must welcome him as friends. But at that moment, Buckland elbowed his way through the crowd. He carried a rifle and he leveled it in the sergeant's direction. The shaman's wife screamed. No! 
At that moment, a terrific gust of wind hit the village, and a solid wall of white obscured the sled. But only for a second. The wind died, the snow cleared, and Buckland raised his rifle once more. Yeah, there he is. His target was no longer straight ahead. The sergeant had swerved to the left and was heading for the rear of the shaman's igloo. Buckland shifted his aim. But now the sergeant was in pistol range, and his gun spoke before Buckland. <laughs> Buckland had misjudged King's speed, and his shot passed behind the sergeant. But the sergeant's bullet struck the killer in his right shoulder. Still, he took aim again. I'll get you this time. <laughs> he never pulled the trigger. The sergeant's second shot caught him in the right arm, and the rifle dropped to the ground. King, King! King swerved to the right at the sergeant's command and drove straight toward Buckland and the villagers. A second later, the sergeant halted the team. Well, Buckland, it's been a long chase. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. You have kept your promise. You have brought us food. Yes, shaman. Before I leave with my prisoner, I'll take you to the place where the seal are. My good spirit. We will move our village to this new place. Sergeant. Sergeant. Here's Tornak. Oh? May, may I have him back? Of course you may, Niku. He'll travel with us to Herschel Island. The school is there? Yes, Niku, and both you and Tornak will be welcome there. And you? I'll be taking my prisoner on to Dawson. There's no doubt of your guilt, Buckland. I have the testimony of the Indians who saw you kill the traitor and the priest. When you face the judge in Dawson, this case will be closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. When you get up tomorrow morning, there's nothing that'll taste so good as delicious Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice with milk or cream and fruit. Every crisp, luscious bite has that swell, nut-like flavor that hits the spot. Try it tomorrow morning. When the alarm rings, think of those big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice waiting for you. Yep, the packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the sure and only way to get the original, crisp, fresh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Miners' Meeting. When King and I reached Gonaway Creek, young Johnny Johnson, found guilty of murder by a miners' meeting, already had the noose around his neck. We didn't know then that the real criminals were part of the mob who were about to hang him. But the moment came when we were facing death and the killer's guns. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, Produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice.